You know what the best thing about America is? What's that? In my opinion, it's the refillable drinks. <laughs> hey fam, Beer Mile Nation goes international today. We've got Adele Tracy and Ben Coldre of the UK. And today we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna see how fast we can record the intro and outro. People give us feedback. They say we talk too much. Shut your mouths, blah, 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 blah. Get to the guests. Okay, so that's what we're doing today. Adele and Ben, this is a great conversation. We talk about running, compare the UK to Wait, the US. Wait, we talk about running? We're not a running podcast. That's true, we're not a running podcast. We don't talk about running. We talk about Wait, right. okay. having, a, a, having a tortoise as a pet. Got my, hold on, let me, before we do that, I gotta start my watch. Ready, on your mark, get set, go. Let me make sure I properly introduce our guest here, Adele. 800 meter runner for Great Britain. She has been a torchbearer at the Olympics. She has competed on the international stage, world championships, Olympic games, super fast, 159, 800 meter PR. Ben Coldre, former elite runner himself, and now the co-founder of Athlete Manny's, which is an amazing concept. We get into that where instead of just having a nanny take care of your kids, you get to have someone athletic teach your kids sport, whether it's athletics or any other sport. We dive into Adele's side passions, makeup and hair. We also hit on their pet tortoise as well in a crazy little adventure that the tortoise took running away for a while and being at a farm a mile away. Who knew that tortoises could I didn't know run they for could, a mile? Yeah, I didn't know they could make it a mile. So that's on the show today. At the end of the episode, we're going to review Modelo because it's in the fridge. Don't know what to expect. Actually, we kind of do because we've had it before. But that's at the end of the episode. Anything else that we need to plug? Can we plug our two folks who left Ooh. us five-star Apple yeah. podcast reviews? Uh, so I'll go with, with the first one. That's uh, Joey Shandell. Shandle. Shandle. Okay. You're Joey the- Shandle, Will Schrantz. Thank you both for sending in those five star Apple podcast reviews. Let us know what you want from the beermall.com swag store on our Instagram page. And I think that's about it, y'all. If you want to support the show, anchor.fm slash beer dash mile dash media. We really appreciate the support. Still no sponsor. You know, lost opportunity for every brand out there. Sorry for y'all. Uh, sponsor the show. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on the audio platform of your choice. Five star review on Apple Podcasts. We really appreciate it. Anything else? Damn, dude, that that's like an 800 PR. <laughs> Literally, when you just flashed that, it was at 159. Adele Tracy's PR in the 800 Whoa, meters. Right. Soon to be beaten. Soon to be 158, yeah. 157. Yeah. But let's get into this conversation with Adele Tracy and Ben Coldre. So welcome to the show, Adele and Ben. Uh, how is everything going? You're both in the U.S. right now. How is the U.S. treating you? Yeah, thank you for having us. Um, yeah, it's good. I've I've been here since January. Um, I came out just before the U.K. went into lockdown, like um, just to get some like consistency with training and stuff. Um, and then Ben's just come out the last two weeks to help me out. Um, and we've had like yeah, a really good time. We've got some good training done. Uh, what do you do this weekend? So yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had a sick time to be fair. Um, you're what? You still got about a month left, haven't you? So, yeah, uh, I'm going to be here for a little bit longer. Um, yeah, and it's strange because I literally thought I was staying for a month, and um, it's like turned into five months. So yeah, <laughs> it was just that, impossible to get home, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was, yeah. It was tough yeah. getting home. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's what I was going to say. Is it is it just because of the travel restrictions, and and well, is that why you stayed longer? Well, also it was um, at home. No tracks were open. There was literally, you couldn't go gym. You couldn't go on the tracks. You literally had to make your own gym at home and run on on the road. And yeah. it's just, you know, if you're trying to prepare for the Olympics or whatever, which I'm not, so it doesn't matter to me, but, <laughs> uh, but for you. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a very challenging year. So, yeah. like, we just got to make the call to to come out here I was staying with a friend in Houston um and yeah then I'm now we're in Flagstaff so so how does that work for uh for our U.S. listeners how does qualifying for the Olympic team work uh in in Britain like are you yeah is there like a one specific race where you have to show up kind of like our Olympic trials or is it a selection how does that work 
And so we have like the same standard. So in terms of like we have to run a uh, qualifying standard for me for 800, that's 159.5. And then um, we have our Olympic trials and you have to place top two for automatic qualification with the qualifying time. And then the third spot is discretionary. Um, I think this year will be a little bit different, maybe because the world rankings kind of play a little bit into that too. But it's probably quite similar to the US in terms of um, that process. Like, I know you guys are like one, two, three across the line. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we have that like third spot, which is, mm. yeah. So, so do your guys have to run the, the qualifying time as well to get in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. you could be you could be like second at the Olympic trials qualifying race and be second in the US. But unless you've hit that Olympic standard, then they'll like yeah, keep yeah. going back. So then it'll be fourth place, then fifth place and okay. sixth place until someone has hit it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So similar to ours, but ours, ours is third place is kind of up for kind of debate, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't there, there, um, wasn't there yeah. a thought recently for the marathon in the UK that there is some controversy about? <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think it was controversy. I think it was the uh, the race where, shoot, I can't remember what his name was, where he won. He was uh he had been in the sport for many years shoot i'm like yeah, I'm like, I'm like, yes yes and he ended up winning winning the race uh yeah so yeah so that was the issue is that like not everyone was at home for the uh marathon trial so i think um a lot of people didn't end up going to the trial and making that tough decision but i think when you make that call obviously you you then you know if somebody else steps up that's really challenging so yeah it was definitely mm-hmm. um yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, right. things going on for the Olympic uh, marathon trial, but yeah, that team's already already selected. So, yeah. So, how how do you like training in Flagstaff? Do you enjoy it? How does it compare to? So, you live in the city in London, right? So, it's probably quite a bit different training wise than what you would normally be used to. Yeah. So we we live on the the kind of outskirts of London in the like southwest London in a place called Twickenham, um, which is like. <laughs> It's like the home of rugby, um, as in English rugby. Um, and, yeah, so it's, it's quite different, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's kind of a bit suburb almost, but, like, you're about 50 minutes from London. Um, but we have, like, a bit of a running hub there because um, St. Mary's University, like, kind of has a lot of great runners come out mm-hmm. of it. Um, Mo Farah went there. And a lot of the athletes that are kind of doing the European circuit base themselves in Teddington because – um, we have like Richmond Park and Bushy Park, so some really great running. Mel- Melbourne Track Club, right? yeah, Down Melbourne Track Club come base um, ourselves in the summer, uh, like in yeah, probably what, from like May to August in, yeah. in Tenton. So it's just like it's kind of like it's like Flagstaff, isn't it? Because there's so many runners yeah. here in Flagstaff that um, yeah, it's kind of a similar similar sort of vibes in that aspect, but. Britain as a whole, I mean, Chris, you've been that it's completely, it's completely different to out here. Yeah. Um, the altitude for one is, yeah, a real challenge. Um, but yeah, like Ben said, the, um, I guess the running community that you get because everybody goes there to, to get some good training um, is quite similar. Mm. Um, yeah. You know what the best thing about America is? What's that? In my opinion, it's the refillable drinks at, uh, at like, like at home you order like you get like oh can i get a pepsi or you know a lemonade and they just bring you like a small little glass of lemonade and that's it and you pay like three pounds for it and then that's like, it you, you, you are, buy you, you buy it every time though like you go out and you're like, is this refillable and they're like, <laughs> they're like what do you mean refillable it's like if you bought your own cup or something i'm like no 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 like, <laughs> <laughs> just keep refilling my dr pepper <laughs> people, used to, people used to do that uh in mcdonald's where i went to high school like they would uh they would put out notice that you would have to purchase your cup there like the the day you were there because so many people would just like keep a mcdonald's cup in their car and yeah. then walk in and refill it a, a day <laughs> like a month later yeah, yeah. You, just, you, you buy it once and then every single day you keep going back and refilling it. <laughs> no we, we definitely have that i don't know if that's a good thing that you can no. go into a coffee shop or a fast food place and just refill whatever drink you want endless times but it is pretty nice i'll agree with you on that i have yeah. a coffee as well don't you I, yeah yeah it's, it's so good yeah <laughs> that's my one selling point out here <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah i was i was picturing when you were like being 
you being from London, I was just picturing like I've only been in like the heart of London and all the people and not really good for running other than the parks, of course. But uh, yeah. But like just like super compact. So that's what I was imagining. And I was yeah, thinking yeah. like, oh, that's not ideal for training. But it makes a lot more sense now that you're saying you're a little, little bit out of town and you have a history of having a lot of good runners coming from that area. Yeah. 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 Speaking of uh, coffee, I always wanted to ask, um, you know, Brits who are very, very tea focused. Uh, I have <laughs> a thing where if I make tea, uh, I learned that I'm not supposed to do this. But like when you're steeping it, like I'll like play around with the tea bag. And just like mm-hmm. make it go faster. Yeah, it's really right. telling how, how people make a cup of tea, you know? Yeah, there's, there's, a, <laughs> there's a massive debate at home. So I was actually, funny enough, I was Googling like, like, <laughs> like what's what's the best way to make a cup of tea like the other day because my my dad and my mum they're like now nah, you've got to leave the tea bag in to stew for like five minutes and I'm like it's cold like, it's cold <laughs> by the time it comes out so I was googling it and apparently they say like the I don't know who it is but <laughs> <laughs> the experts of tea say you have to leave the tea bag in for 25 seconds and you're not meant to squeeze the tea bag or anything like that. So I don't know. Give it, give it a go. Yeah. yeah. That, that seems kind of short. 25 yeah. seconds. I, I just like yeah. leap in there. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, 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 don't shoot the messenger. Like, <laughs> I'm just, just passing on the expert with advice. So, so tea or coffee? What's your what's your preference? Oh, I I'm gonna say because I really like coffee, but I probably only have like one a day because I'm like super caffeine sensitive. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say tea because I drink it more. So I I mm. like decaf tea. I love peppermint tea in the evening, ginger tea. Um, yeah. So British. I know. It's <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm so British right now. <laughs> uh, what about you boys? Do you uh, are you coffee or tea drink? I assume coffee. Yeah, coffee, coffee during the day, but uh, especially when I'm at my parents' house, they have this really fancy, um, like just boil it. Like you press the button and boiling water comes out. Oh, uh, so when I'm there, I actually drink a lot of tea. Oh, well, yeah, there you go. That makes one of us. Yeah, tea, yeah. tea maybe once a month, realistically, really? not very mm-hmm. often. I don't yeah. know. So yeah. yeah, I guess I guess I got some work to do. Maybe I just haven't had the right tea yet. I've just had the the cheap. <laughs> Whatever the cheap, like mass-produced tea is in the yeah. US. So you need, I, yeah. the big one in London, in uh, England, is uh, they have like Yorkshire Gold, and it's from like um, up north. And uh, everyone like most, goes mad yeah, for it. Most don't people they? drink Yorkshire tea, but yeah. I think everybody else thinks we drink PG tips. PG tips, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, should we? Should we I think we're chat about tea. I want to be it. Be <laughs> should we do the U.S. versus U.K. segment? That's a good transition. Right? Yeah. Okay. While we're on it, we were, we were going to maybe save this till the end, but like we're already on this topic, so we we've done this with a couple of guests now on like U.S. versus their home country. Like, what do you prefer across all these different topics? So we did this with Kirana Leonard about Ireland, and then mm-hmm. who else have we done this with? We definitely. Yes. Oh, uh, Justin, Justin, Knight. Justin Knight for Canada. Yeah. So. Okay, so U.S. Give us your preference, U.S. versus U.K. So let's yeah. start with food. Do you like U.S. food better or U.K. food better? Uh, and I'm, also, I'm, okay, right before you, right before you start. So, is the proper thing to say like Britain, U.K. Like, what are you, what are you typically England? Like, I, I always get confused on what you would say. I mean, yeah, whatever. It doesn't doesn't really matter. I mean, <laughs> they're, all, they're all they're all fungible. <laughs> I mean, we're we're English, so we're actually from England. But um, right. I mean, England, Wales, Scotland. It's yeah, UK, yeah, British. UK, British. Yeah. It doesn't. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're not going to get offended. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah well, 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 you answer the question first. I'll answer second. Okay. Just yeah. so we're not interrupting each other. <laughs> um, I I think you ask. I think you guys do food very well, um, yeah. and you have a lot more choice than we do. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. It, what's the favorite? What's the favorite food like in the U.S. that you can't necessarily get in England? Yeah, <laughs> like Tex-Mex, <laughs> like Mexican food, like good Mexican food. Yes, yeah. Yeah. love it because we can't really, we don't really get that at home, do we? We get sort of like burrito, maybe we have like chiquitos, don't we? And yeah, but yeah, I like um, I like Denny's. Denny's, <laughs> that is, um, that, that's a good yeah. choice. That's, that's like quintessential American. That is. Yeah. 
since I've been here, I think I've only been here what about 14 days, two weeks. And yeah. I think I've been to Denny's about 10 or 11 times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about the Denny's. Then just been taking themselves off and like jet lagged at like five in the morning. Just yeah. <laughs> I don't know that, that that's kind of embarrassing to be honest. That's uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're like, they're, I'm turning up. And they're like, oh, the usual. Yeah, I've got your booth ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. I, I don't know if we can be so high and mighty. We had Culver's this week. I was gonna. I I I eat my fast food when I'm on the road too, so I can't I can't talk any crap on that. <laughs> what, what's Culver's? Yeah, what's Culver's? Culver's is like um. I would call it a Wisconsin McDonald's. So it's like it's it's uh it's mostly in the Midwest in the U.S., but it's uh it's like a nicer McDonald's or Burger King. It's uh, you ever had uh, cheese curds? No, oh, I'm lost. Gosh, I feel like you. Oh know. yeah, there we go. <laughs> deep fried, deep fried balls of cheese. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah don't do that at home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, like. When you're out here, because you're on training camps, you you don't really get to experience the fast food stuff because yeah. you're you know, you're on healthy eating and focus and all that. I mean, you do every now and yeah, again. I you'll, love you'll come to I am intrigued food. by that. I like, feel like taco bell. Oh, I love a taco yeah. bell. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if I got one up there. Okay. So there's, there's a select few Taco Bells that have um, they're called Taco Bell Cantinas, and they okay. serve alcohol there. Oh. Yeah, a, whole, a whole another level. Of yeah, have you yeah. ever been to a Taco Bell that I, I don't know if the talk ta- there's Taco Bells outside the US. I don't know if you've been to one like that there, served there's alcohol. One, there's one that's opened up in London actually. I haven't been to it. Yeah, yeah there's a new one. That's, yeah, I think it's the only one in England. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Well, but, that yeah. that one that one probably had yeah, they have like just like you I don't know, you go into a gas station in the US and there's like the ICs, the Slurpees, they're called different things, but like the I they have that, but they're alcoholic in the Taco Bells will just have it. You can get like whatever flavor alcoholic icy drink that you want from there. It's kinda of like a margarita. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, just different flavors of margarita. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oh, another amazing thing about America that I love is when you go to the, the gas stations, as you call it, and uh you've got just those like a hundred meters worth of like energy drinks, Powerade, yeah. like slurping. What do you, what do you just eat? Like, yeah. <laughs> just stand there for a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah, I love, oh yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> It, yeah, it is. I guess a little overwhelming, but also you have every option that you could ever yeah, yeah. want. Yeah. yeah. So are yeah. you are you into that? I guess we talked about coffee, tea. What about like energy drinks? Is that a oh. is that a thing you dive into or no? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I would, but yeah, I drink, I drink too much coffee as it is, but if I'm doing like a, a long drive, like, I don't know, for example, last night we, um, we landed in, in Phoenix at like midnight and we had to get up to Flagstaff. So I, you know, I slammed a quick Red Bull sort of thing, but not necessarily like the big, what they call like monster well, energies yeah, like monster and, uh, and that sort of stuff. I've actually never had one. So if you recommend me one, I'll, I'll definitely give it a go tomorrow. <laughs> I, I don't know if I recommend it, to be honest, but, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. the energy it, drinks hurt my stomach so much. It, it, yeah. it is really like, uh, at least for me, it's like a it's like a road trip. Like you have to drive for like six hours or something. So you okay. just have yeah. to have something to get you through. But yeah, I guess yeah, that, like, that is like very... like shaking at the wheel. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, it, and it, it is funny, like, going back to the size thing it's like they're all like you know this tall and it's like, like why yeah. do they have to be that big like you don't <laughs> need so that like, <laughs> <laughs> all right let's go into how about u.s versus uh versus england and culture what culture do you like better oh that's a tough one especially like because i'm i'm technically an american citizen so i feel like I don't know if I can answer this one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, what, what, what culture have I, have I... I've seen the Grand Canyon. Is that culture? Is that yeah, kind of culture? I think so. Uh, well, culture's kind of like... Um, We've just got cathedrals and stuff, haven't we? Yeah. And like... We've got a lot of yeah, like castles, old, yeah, castles and old buildings <laughs> and stuff. Um, also, like so, like social norms. Um, I'm trying. Yeah, to social norms, like the just the like the vibe of people. Uh, uh, like, okay. Yeah, like buildings. Yeah, yeah, that's really. I I do think 
I'm, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna say US because I just feel like you guys are really good at making people feel really welcome and yeah, yeah. Um, I've been doing a lot of training on my own here with Lifestyle and I've like met so many different people and they've been so like willing to just like let me jump in um, I I feel like sometimes British people can come off a little bit like cold sometimes yeah, so you guys are a lot warmer yeah Americans are yeah. a lot friendlier yeah. than, than, than us going back to <laughs> going back to Denny's when, when they're serving me they're all smiling and they're asking yeah. questions whereas <laughs> at home it's like customer service what do you want is, yeah sweet alright <laughs> <laughs> have you have you been have you been to like new york city because I, 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 I was just gonna say like so i would say a lot of a lot of places in the u.s definitely welcoming like that but new york city is probably a little more similar to london where it's like people are not necessarily trying to make friends when they're out hanging okay. out about. yeah it's, it's more like business you know it's like, more like yeah straight to the point yeah. business yeah yeah i mean you've been I ha- yeah i have been but like really briefly for um the fifth half um yeah so yeah i didn't pick up on it too much because i probably wasn't getting on the do you guys call it the subway mm-hmm. just need the tube yeah i didn't get i didn't get the subway i feel like i need to do that and like live like a new yorker to mm. <laughs> soak up the culture I, the new york subway system is uh wild there are, there's so much there there's like creatures on it that that's the one thing we don't have as good as I, this act, this act, I think there's i think there's an instagram account called uh subway creatures it's like it's based in new york and just all the crazy shit you see on the new york subway system okay i mean to be honest, i think all british shoes probably have something similar i've had something that like you can get they've got like a specific breed of mosquito down there what, on, on the tube yeah yeah <laughs> So, yeah. wow. <laughs> Not quite this wasn't even one of the questions but now that we're talking about public transportation i think Ooh. i think europe and england like you have figured out public transportation way better than the u.s has like for oh, sure yeah. it's not i don't know the cities that do have it it's not super well run and not that reliable and at least in my experience i don't know i haven't been everywhere but yeah like, then you go to like a lot of cities you just can't there's no public transportation You're, like oh, you have to own yeah. a car yeah. and mm-hmm. it's not, yeah. not ideal like the bus system's bad and whatever else yeah definitely that's something that we've like noticed because i because obviously we live on the outskirts of london but we we literally never drive yeah. like i have like a little run around um that I like barely ever used just to like go see my mum in like Devon because she lives a bit further away but like I get the bus train like pretty much everywhere I will just walk um mm-hmm. or bike as well um but you can't really do that in the US so yeah it's a different yeah but if you lived in the countryside in yeah. England if you live more like you'd have to have a car yeah yeah but actually in London like you can get from ours we live like 13 miles away from central london we can get there in like 15 minutes on the train like no bother oh, that's yeah, yeah, yeah that's so nice yeah, yeah. Our, that's the other thing is like why are our trains so slow our trains do US. move really slow <laughs> in the US. like there are some lines that you you might go like 40 miles per hour on but yeah. most, <laughs> very the slow. ones the ones in chicago probably I don't know. It's always it's always quicker to drive even with traffic. You could probably Chicago, which you could probably run with them and keep great. up with it. Okay. Oh, definitely. We were looking like um because I'm going to LA in a couple of weeks and I saw I noticed there was a train you could get from Flagstaff. I was like, oh okay, maybe I'll get the train. And it's like nine hours or something. <laughs> but to be fair, that's actually not that much time. That's something I've realized about um I guess like Americans, like you guys, don't actually mind driving in the car for a long period of time. Especially in the Midwest, like, think a two-hour drive is a really long drive. Uh, so, but yeah, yeah, I guess when you're driving from state to state, it's at least yeah. like five, six hours, probably. Yeah. So, right, where, so where the, are you two from? Chicago. In, in, in Chicago. Uh, both of you. Yeah. Well, so we're we're in Chicago now. I actually grew up in in Iowa, which okay. so it was still in a city, but not not nearly as big. So it it. In the U.S., we are very like car dependent. Oh, yeah. Like you, basically, you can't like get to work if you don't have a car. Like yeah. where I grew up, so it, it's a completely different, completely yeah. different uh, yeah. mindset. Your drive, I mean, I don't know the ins and outs, but your driving test is quite easy, isn't it? Oh yeah, oh yeah, like, oh yeah. <laughs> like ours is, ours is, yeah, so hard. Yeah, it, was, it is so hard. I was looking at um, 
one of my like deep dark YouTube holes at like two in the morning. I was watching this video on oh, God. A, was it, it was a driving test to become a licensed taxi driver in London, and you have to like okay. you have to like know how like the most efficient roads to take to like pick your passenger up and drop them off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess like a lot of the taxi drivers, like black cab drivers, like they just, they don't really use that enough, do they? They just kind of, they know it. Yeah. Yeah. Here it's yeah. like you, depending on like the Lyft or Uber driver you get, you might, it might be like 40 minutes to the airport and it might be an hour. Like the, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Depends how much money they want to make. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah no, our, our driving test is as simple as you like, answer some multiple choice questions on a on a piece of paper and then like boom, you're questions. good you're good to go drive like yeah. it's, it's, the, it's the simplest thing ever <laughs> so yeah do you think and, and all your cars are automatic as well yeah yes. whereas we we unless you've got a very posh you know like tesla bmw mercedes all of ours are um manual or yeah. stick um so yeah you have to learn the uh the ins and outs, yeah. yeah. I, I actually was fortunate that my dad did teach me that when I was like learning to drive, but like it's now so in the US now, if you want to buy a car that's it's, the stick, it's more expensive. you have to pay extra yeah. to get the stick shift because really? they like just don't have them. They're yeah. not like at the dealerships. If you go if you go to buy a car, they just don't even exist. Yeah. So which is so weird. I, I don't know why. I guess why why do like, why do you all want to have to do that as you're driving? Like, why is that still a part of the culture? I don't know. I'm just kind of like, I like that I have the skill there, you know, because a lot of the cars in Europe are, I think automatic might be more expensive as well. I don't know. I have a manual car. So um, I, I I think it's because we've, <laughs> I mean, I'm completely, this is just my head going right now. But, like I, I've like your cars because they're automatic. They're quite slow off the mark. Yeah. Whereas in manual, you can you can get you can accelerate quick. And I assume in England because the roads are short and tight, and there's cars all around yeah. you. You have to kind of like I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think most most cars like in the US start in second gear, so it's not not as fast. Right. Sounds yeah. logical to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, when I studied that at university. Uh, <laughs> Majored in uh, car acceleration. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's do um, US versus UK music. Ooh. Do you know what? I don't even know. I think it's probably like 50 50 for me. I'm trying to think what I listen to now. Um, One Direction. Me. <laughs> KSI. KSI. Ben's music taste is very specific and <laughs> it's. It's like he goes through phases, so it's like one artist for a really long time. So yeah. like he's just listed two. But oh, yeah. I'm I'm mad into um <laughs> into do you know KSI? Yeah, he's isn't he um didn't he like fight Logan Paul? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's, guy. Okay. he's like yeah, he's like a YouTuber turned musician. Um, yeah, musician and anyway i watch all his youtube videos so i'm just a massive fanboy of it so. <laughs> but that's kind of all i listen to right yeah and you had like Cher, Cher lloyd was one for a while so i go now <laughs> um oh i'm gonna i'm gonna say us yeah yeah, listen, mm. I, I literally cannot think right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say majority of my music probably is. Yeah. Best, yeah. How about you? I assume you listen to a bit of both. Listen, listen to everything. I feel like in the US though, we get so many of our like top musicians in the US are not necessarily from the US. Like a lot yeah. of them are from the UK yeah. or from Canada. So it's like always yeah. hard to tell like who is even US versus not US. So <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, I don't know. I just listened to a little bit of everything. And yeah. but I, think, think, yeah. I think most of the house music I listen to is not from the US. That, that, that was the, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the main thing for us is the, like the, the EDM uh, genre is a lot better in Europe. So oh, yeah. not necessarily like just UK, but in general, like the techno house music is typically better yeah. in Europe. There's a huge scene for that stuff over over our way, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm um, yeah. Yeah, I remember well, you know Dale. Um yeah. he is 
he well i don't know if he's anymore but he was just a massive house fan back in the day when we we're at uni together like like non-stop like it'd be like 2 a.m in the morning you're like sleeping and all of a sudden you're like mm, mm, mm. <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, come on <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah he's a bit big abisa fan so yeah. yeah, I guess that leads perfectly into what's better. And I don't know if you've experienced this much in the U S but what's better, um, as far as nightlife goes. Oh, yeah, I actually haven't been, I, I, wouldn't be able really to comment, I wouldn't be able to comment on that. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I, I'd have to say UK. Yeah. I feel like that you, that you're more, you have more experience at that. Chris, because you've actually experienced both, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. What would I you have say? flip it, reverse it. Yeah. No, that's that's a good yeah. point. I I don't know. I would. It, it's yeah. different. So when I was in London, I thought it was strange that a lot of the like a lot of the bars, well, the pubs would close at like kind of early, and then you had yeah. to go to a club. So I think it's just like a different in the U.S. Basically, everything is open until whatever two a.m. Some places mm-hmm. three or four a.m. And yeah. so when I think of nightlife, I guess, so I would say clubs way better in, way better in London, like no, okay. no comparison, okay. nightlife way better there. Cause I think a lot of our, like we going, com- a lot of nightlife here and- going out is like, you're really just going to a bar and it's like, some of them have dance floors, but it's not really like the club scene. So we okay. don't, we don't really have that. At least where I've been, I'm sure in New York, it's a lot better, but mm-hmm. where, I, where I've been in Chicago, it's not, not up to the level that I experienced in London. Okay. Yeah, I mean, London's a great night out. It's, yeah. I mean, it depends where you go. It's, it's in town, in natural London town. It, it's very expensive, though. Like, but but where we live, it's it's pretty amazing, isn't, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, like, we're yeah. kind of on the outskirts, but you know, we've got a lot of you pubs. Can't, like, you, pubs yeah, you can't you can't walk hundred meters without getting a without get a pub. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So how does that like kind of a tangent? But how does that work then for the two of you? So now. Adele, you're like very focused as a professional runner, obviously. And then Ben, you don't have that restriction. So like, how do, how do you two handle like having, yeah. you know, having yeah, a night out or whatever? Kind of worms here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, we, uh, we handle it pretty well, don't we? I mean, quite a lot of time, you know, you're away racing on weekends or yeah. I basically enjoy some I, while I'm away. I try and plan my, I try and plan my week my my nights out with my mates when Adele's you know racing in Europe or she's on training camps or you know obviously there are times when I come home at you know midnight 1am and I <laughs> snore my head off because I've had 10 pints so yeah see, that, that is the worst part of it yeah <laughs> like you you've got there's there you've got no problem with me going out yeah at all you're not usually a snorer so and I, I love my yeah sleep, so. it's just yeah I just when I've had a few beers <laughs> I snore so it's just like yeah look, I'm just gonna sleep on the sofa tonight because <laughs> no, you're not gonna sleep before I, so. you're, you're um, self-aware though so that's good that's good yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah you're very relaxed in that but yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> so do, do you get to Adele do you get to like enjoy nights out in the off season and take advantage of that or how do i mean how do you handle it because i think some pro runners are like some are like you know cold turkey never drink ever and then some are like just only the two weeks in the off season like all in like basically every night and then you have then you have like a mix of like some people are like every couple weeks after a race maybe i'll go out every other friday yeah so like how do how do you balance that um i think i'm I'm probably quite lucky that my friendship group is like, I, I am friends with a lot of runners. So they like a similar lifestyle, like probably don't go out that often. So it's not like a temptation or anything, but I'm, I actually just love an early night. Like I, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit boring in that with us, but um, yeah, at the end of season, like I love, I love going out as well. Like I'll usually try and go away with my um, mm-hmm. girlfriends and we'll go somewhere and yeah. let our hair down a little bit. But I, Usually once I've been out like a couple of times, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm good. I can get back to training now, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess I'm, maybe I'm somewhere in the middle. Um, I'm not like a massive casual drinker as in I, I like cocktails. Like I like maybe like Prosecco or something like that. Kombucha 3%. <laughs> Kombucha. <laughs> there you <Why>? go. <laughs> but um, like I, I don't like, wouldn't have like a drink with a meal. I think I, if I'm going to drink, I, I'll have a few. Sort of yeah. Thing, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you like, you, yeah, on, on off season, you like going for a little bit of a boogie, don't you? Yeah, a boogie. <laughs> boogie on, that, on the dance floor. Yeah, I think that's it. I just like yeah. to dance. Well, like, yeah. like if you ever go out for um, 
like in lockdown, like with my mum, you having a few gin and tonics every now and again, weren't yeah. you? But, yeah. I think yeah. that's it. Like, I think it's just, it's, you've got to have a bit of balance with it. Um, I would never be someone that's like cold turkey because I'm, I'm very much like, um, I wouldn't say I'm all or nothing with anything. Like I'm very sort of in the middle. Yeah. Um, I think you have a very good balance with it. Yeah. So. <laughs> that, that makes a lot of sense. All right. How about, well, I guess two, two parter then. So U S versus UK on beer. So maybe this is more for Ben. Like what, 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 where's the, is the beer better in the U S or in the UK? And then, uh, what, what's like favorite drink for both of you? Like now that it, like in t- cocktails, mm. wine, like what, just what's your favorite drink in general? So me and my uh, younger brother, we, we love a, I don't know if you have it out here. Do you have Heineken out here? Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we love a, a good draft Heineken, um, at the pub. Um, and also, I, I don't think you have it here, but also Strongbow. Do you have Strongbow dark fruit? Yes, we do. You, you haven't had that? We, we, so. we, at some, it's not super common, but like some specialty yeah. stores will have it. Yeah, yeah. So, so they're my, my go-to. But um, yeah, out here, you just, again, you just have a lot more selection. And uh, it seems like you've got a lot of um, pay or ale as well. Yeah, um, that's a huge American. Yeah, pale. the the <laughs> India Pale Ale and the American Pale Ale, like those are that's what pretty much every brewery they like start their brewery off of like multiple yeah. versions of that. Yeah. So and, and yeah, I'm so actually that, not a huge fan of that. I'm kind of with you. I, I kind of like the lighter beers that yeah. are more drinkable. But mm-hmm. yeah, that's huge here. If you like if you like any sort of pale ale, then you love the U.S. Basically. Yeah, it's it's, it's we, we do get IPA and all of that over in England. It's just less you know it's not less frequent it's all it's all lager fosters heineken that sort of stuff um yeah. stella i was so um, weird when i found out the like how ipas came about like it was it was more of a mistake than an innovation like they um essentially they were they were shipping beer and they had to put preservatives in it so that it would be it would last longer and be okay to drink when it got to the states so oh, it's like okay. that preservatives that gave it like this really like off color taste and now it's just a huge Became part of the thing. culture and i kind of don't like it <laughs> <laughs> what about you what's your go-to um i think my go-to drink is probably like uh, i'd probably go for like an apple spritz like that's why i always like at the end of the season i'm like yeah an apple spritz or um like a cocktail like something like mojitos. yeah mojitos, like a espresso martini yeah yeah, yeah yeah something okay. like that okay I, I have a bit of an immature palate i think i didn't actually like coffee for a long time i think that's it i just really like sweet things or anything that's like um um yeah so that's why i'm not a massive beer drinker but <laughs> i wish i was i could have it with some like lime cordial or like kind of like a shandy yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have that with like yeah. a curry or something. It'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know if that's necessarily an immature palate. I mean, beer is pretty like <laughs> especially like the the well, you got Heineken or I don't know, Budweiser or something like that. It's not necessarily like super flavorful. So I, <laughs> it's, it's an acquired <laughs> no, I taste. Um, getting I did this race in Belgium and I I got some have you tried Leffy? Is oh, I Leffy? love Leffy. Leffy's so, so good. good. <laughs> it tastes like feet. I know. <laughs> it tastes like feet. <laughs> like, literally, because I, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll have a beer because it was the end of the season. I'd won these beers. And I was like, this? It's just so like Damn, weird. So I don't know whether that, that specific one was out of date or so. Or like, yeah. oh, oh, <laughs> that was bad. So when I think of beer, I sometimes think of that experience. <laughs> Yeah. What type of what type of beer is that then? I can't remember what it was. Is it, it, is it like an alien one or what? It it would I think it's built I think it's like labeled as just a Belgian style is it a Belgian style wheat? Yeah. Belgian Belgian style wheat I beer, so. I think. Yeah. I don't know. We're not like super experts on beer. Like I know what I like and I know what I don't like, but yeah. I, I actually do really like Leffy. That's like a nice beer that I'll buy sometimes yeah. here, which is that's hilarious. <laughs> Lo- loves the taste of feet. Loves the taste <laughs> big, of yeah, big feet guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh God. Okay, let's. Uh, we got. Well, let's do at least one more of these. Then these are these are good. These are entertaining. So, how about so we know Adele? You've also trained in Kenya uh, previously, so you can also throw that into the mix here. But so, as far as like training goes, do you prefer where you're at 
in the London area? Do you prefer like Flagstaff, the US, uh, or do you prefer Kenya? I guess throw that into the mix too. What's your preference? You've also got South Africa, haven't you? Yeah, South Africa. France, wow. you've got the P- Pyrenees. Mm. So I I actually, I still stand by this. And I think um, a lot of people find Kenya quite difficult because it's quite harsh and like the train can be quite difficult and stuff. But Food's a bit different as well, isn't it? Yeah, you've got to bring some food in your suitcase. Yeah. Um, but... I, I love Kenya. It's it's still my favorite place to go just because like um the home of champions, like the place we stay in Iten is like it's just like a really peaceful place to be. And I feel like you can just be really focused. And because I usually go away for a month at a time um on a camp, it's quite nice for me to just like be like no distractions, no work, and just kind of focus on running, um, kind of get my eat pray love vibes on. Um so yeah, I love it when I go there. It's just yeah, it's really peaceful. And the, the running from the door, I think that's it. Like there's nowhere I've been, nowhere else in the world I've been that you can do so many loops from the door. Like Flagstaff's great. It's got that sort of trail surface as well, but there's a lot of out and backs. Um, and you have to drive over, don't you? Yeah, you have to drive, whereas you can literally run from the door in Kenya. And that's what I love. Um, so yeah, I'd say that's my favorite place. But we've been to Botramo. Um, you went to San Maritz, didn't San Maritz. you? Yeah, I love San Maritz as well. Excellent um yeah so and and south africa as well but i mean that's quite a bit lower in altitude so it's a little bit more like heat so we did a bit in uganda <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> we, went, we went to uganda for your brother's wedding and just like turned it into an altitude camp and yeah. like, oh, it's altitude. <laughs> yeah. it was a lot tougher than i thought yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so how did you decide on flagstaff then is it like uh coached like driving that decision or did you like have you been before and you just know that it's a good spot because you because you mentioned that you don't nec- like you didn't necessarily come to train with specific people and you just have like kind of yeah. met people over time so yeah why Flagstaff? So um originally in December I think we were thinking about going to South Africa um and then the South African variant happened and nobody could travel there so um I think we were we wanted to go to Flagstaff, but knew it'd be quite like snowy in January. We wanted to do a bit of like training just ahead of um, indoors and yeah, get some consistency because we kind of knew the UK was probably going to go into lockdown again. So um, me and Seth, well, um, she's just made the marathon team um, headed to my friend's place in Houston. Um, and that was perfect because it was just like warm and like it was so cold in the UK at that time. Yeah. Go for a week. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we headed there and um yeah, we I think I was just gonna come home after January actually and just go back to the UK, but obviously then things got a bit more difficult. So my coach was just like, Yeah, we'd usually go to Flagstaff in spring, so maybe you should just stay for an extra two months. I was like, sure. Um and I've been to Flagstaff this I think this is my third or fourth time I've been. Um yeah. I went in 2017 and 2018 as well, um, ahead of the summer. So I knew it kind of worked for me. Um oddly I quite like being at high altitude. I think I, I get a really good response as soon as I drop down. So um, we kind of knew that it would work. Um, so yeah, came up in March for a month, then dropped down to Houston for a couple of weeks and then came back up. So yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. And and so you were, you were born in Seattle, correct? And then yeah. do, do you remember how, what age were you when you uh, left the US? Um, so I was probably like maybe three or four. So I actually don't have that many memories from Seattle. Right. Okay. Um, I, I then moved to Jamaica and lived there until I was seven. So I have more memories from Jamaica, um, cause my dad's Jamaican and then we moved to the UK when I was about seven or eight. So I've grown up majority in the UK. My mom's British. Um, yeah, yeah which is why I compete for Great Britain, but I am actually a US citizen. <laughs> That's yeah, that's pretty crazy to have like all of those different experiences, like three different countries, basically. Yeah. That's very unique. Um, what, yeah. would you, so I, I know your dad was a former uh, runner as well. So is that mm-hmm. kind of how you got introduced to it at a young age? Um, I think, yeah, just having knowing, you know, when you, you just know um, there's been somebody who's kind of been in the sport that kind of I guess that does inform like whether you try something um but actually it was just kind of what I just kind of fell into it school like sports day um it was just one of those things that I was kind of good at and um yeah I just kind of kept it there 
all through school um never actually thought as a as a kid you know I'd actually become an athlete but it's something that I'd always wanted to do um yeah my, my dad was a 400 meter um athlete he ran for Jamaica so um I was always quite quick but didn't um I actually always loved the endurance events like when I was a kid like I would look up to people like Paula Radcliffe and um even um I remember mom taking us to um, Crystal Palace to go and watch like the Diamond Leagues like when we were kids and we'd watch like Gabby Slassie and there was just, yeah, I was all about the endurance events. I just thought it looked really cool. So um, I think that's probably why I ended up doing 800 somewhere in between. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no, uh, ha- have you ventured much up, up in distance at all? Or have you been, I, I mean, I know your main event has been the 800, but like, have you, have you experimented at all and, and found any success or st- just sticking with the 800 permanently? Yeah, I think, I think my coach, um, is uh, when I, when I joined him, like, I mean, um, he, I've been coached by, uh, Craig Winrow for about seven years now. And when I first joined him, I was very much like a four, eight runner. Um, I didn't really do much mileage. Um, so that's something that we've worked really hard on over the years, just trying to like get my mileage up to a good, good level. And, um, yeah, he's kind of tested me over the years and been like, okay, you're going to do a 5k time trial, like a park run or whatever. Um, or, um, you know, 1500, cause I, I never used to run 1500s really. Um, and so, yeah, now I kind of feel like a little bit more comfortable in those events. And like I said, I did the Fifth Avenue Mile in New York. And um, yeah, it's 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 been like a process because um, I definitely couldn't withstand the mileage before. But um, I don't think I've got the ability to run for the 3K. <laughs> I feel like you're underselling yourself here because you've, you've run 4.07, which is, you know, very quick you yeah. you won did you did, was it the british mile row champs you won yeah in 2017 um i re- i won the british Road mile championships so yeah i i yeah and <laughs> and <laughs> hey, go on to show yourself here you uh you come what was it sixth or something at british university cross champs Oh yeah, yeah. So I did like we have um bucks. I don't know if you guys. It's like the NCAA of Britain, but obviously it's a lot smaller than than your guys cross. Yeah, and I I was um the women's captain for St Mary's team um in 2016, um and I was like I need to set a good example. I'm gonna do cross country. Mm-hmm. Like it was like my first um bucks cross. I'd never done it. Usually I just do the track. Um yeah, and I I was, like really surprised. It was my first time dropping down from Kenya actually, and just felt like my endurance is in a really good place and yeah I finished like seventh so mm. um that's probably the highest finished place I've finished in a, in a cross country before so and and my coach always makes me do cross like I do Liverpool um mm. our European trials every winter um and that's about 8k so it's like 10 times what I'm used to so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah and I actually oddly enjoy it I think just the the difference of you know running a bit further um so yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, you got no no ideas to move up yet, have you? Really? Yeah. Very much like Yeah, I ended up doing well well now. So straight there. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, I, I definitely want to touch on both of your adventures outside of running. Uh, so I guess, I guess first we can talk about Adele. You're you're dabbling in the makeup side of things. Curious just to see like where that kind of came from and and what what things you're doing right now with it. Yeah, so um, I went to the Arts University of Bournemouth and studied uh, makeup, media and prosthetics. Um, So we just did like, it was an amazing course. Like it's exactly um, the thing that I love. I just, I'm very much like a lot more hands-on, practical sort of learner. So um, that was like an obvious choice. I actually just didn't, uh, think that um, a more academic course would suit me so went to an arts institute so there wasn't really much support for my sport um, and it was kind of like an intensive course for like two years um, in in three so by the time I finished I was like I really feel like I want to apply myself to my sport a little bit um, so that's when I moved to Cray um, but yeah like the first couple of years were quite tough like just getting that balance right because makeup is very different like industry wise to running it's very little routine you have to be on set before everybody else and you also leave um last as well so I could be 
you know, have a call at like 4 4 a.m. Um, because they want the sunlight, you know, coming up, then I might not finish until like 9 p.m. So it's like actually doing that full time is not uh, particularly great for running. Um, but I do just try and keep my foot in the door a little bit. I just think with everything, like you have to support yourself to, you know, a certain extent. Um, and now that I'm kind of lucky enough to do my sport pretty much full time, I do just take my rest day every now and again um, to just do a shoot here and there. And that works because mm. I can just do it for a couple of hours on that on that given day. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely something that I'll come back to in the future. But because um, I, I absolutely I absolutely love my work. Um, but for now, it's like very much um, all about running. Yeah, so that's super cool. So how does that work for like getting like lining up your next gig or whatever your next uh, time that you get to do like be on set and do makeup? Like, are you do you just have ins with a few different uh, like companies, production crews, and then you get recurring like they ask you to come back? How, how does that all work? I'm not not familiar yeah. at all with that industry. <laughs> yeah, when you're a freelancer, it's um, very much about like networking and yeah. making connections with other artists. Like quite often, I'll assist. Um, other artists um, and then you kind of get sort of work through them when they can't do a job they'll pass it on to you um, sometimes people just get in touch through my website um, it's all different work so I like trained in um, all different types of makeup so you can do sort of prosthetics and more aesthetic um, casualty simulation for like film and tv which I've done a little bit I um, worked on um, set for Doctor Who and um yeah and and top gear and things like that so I love the film and tv but it, again it's very unstructured and it can be for like long blocks of time so that's why now I'm sort of more in like fashion and editorial makeup because you can just do the one-off day um but yeah I also do weddings I've done quite a lot of athletes weddings um I think yeah it's, it's nice to have that like personal connection you know when you're doing someone's makeup you know them well um and yeah yeah so it's just, yeah, I, I love the difference in the work. Like, I'll just get um, very different, different, different things. You know, if I was doing it full time, I think that that variation would, um, yeah, be really fun. Does uh, Does Ben ever let you practice on him? <laughs> yeah, she have, haven't you? Not, not, <laughs> not like like a kitten flick and all that. And like actually, like like, Hall- like more like Halloween sort of stuff. Sure. I love that. You- what kitten flick is um yeah, yeah like, like well i do on my saturday nights <laughs> isn't to do with you like <laughs> yeah when i've been doing like prosthetics or like casualty simulation i've like been working like silicon or you know trying to make a wound or something i've like practiced off yeah. then so yeah. yeah it's quite fun <laughs> yeah i'm a bit of a dummy every now and again <laughs> that's super interesting it's always like you don't real at least like a normal person watching a TV show or a movie or whatever. You don't realize like all that goes into setting up a scene, like between like hair, makeup, costume design, like all these different things that go into that. And so it's really cool to to like hear about that and how much work it entails. Because I think a lot of people just take that for granted. Like you don't realize that all that everything that's happening behind the scenes for that. So, um, so so Ben, similarly, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur, uh, what athlete Manny's? We got to talk about this a little bit. Uh, this is like so when this when you first what year did you first announce this in so we started in 2015 2015. um so we've actually been going for six years now so um so so the business is basically it's it's uh it's a nanny agency so over in london um i think the, the nanny system out here is a bit different but um you know, you've got all these families who work in London town and, and you know, obviously live on the outskirts so you get a training, but they don't finish work till, you know, 7 p.m. So and kids get out of school at three. So they need help from three till seven, basically. So we've just got basically a whole a whole load of students from all different kind of sporting backgrounds, educational backgrounds, just, you know, young, fun, enthusiastic people who just want to pick up an extra 40 quid a day or, you know, a few times a week just to basically to fund their nights out like whilst they're students. So, you know, to, to have an extra, you know, 120 quid a week for, uh, sorry, 120 pound a week to, um, you know, spend on beer and that sort of stuff. It's, it's perfect for them. It's proper flexible, you know, it's worse around their, their timetables. Um, so yeah, so it's kind of for a student, it's, it's the perfect job and, you know, 
they seem to prefer it than you know being in Gap or Abercrombie and Fitch folding, yeah. you know, t-shirt, smiling for you know seven pounds an hour. You get paid quite a, a bit more than that. So, um, yeah. so yeah, so myself and uh, a guy called Richard Goodman. I'm not sure if you you know the name. He's um, he was actually the first European to get a a uh, full scholarship to University of Oregon. Um so he he came second at the European Cross Champs like this was years back. And uh anyway so he went to Oregon for a year where we, we were just at so I was chatting to him the other day about where we were. And uh he he ended up getting a couple of stress fractures and got dropped from the team. And he was telling me that his his actual um all his scholarship money actually ended up going to uh Edward Cheserek. So he got, he got dropped for Cheserek. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, they, they spent the money well, but he's, uh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So we just basically, you know, we work on that, helping families all across London with their childcare needs. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's stressful, but, you know, it's, it's a full time job. So, yeah, work on my hours and it's, it's been, it's been very tough out here. I think maybe for Richard, especially with me being out here, because obviously the time difference is eight hours. So, uh, you know, I'm waking up at, you know, four or five a.m. every day to get online and button tap. But, um, yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's just been a, you know, a bit of a blessing. And, you know, yeah. it's, it's a full time job now. So, yeah, we love it. For and sure. I think like you, got, you guys like, they like sort of like, I guess the unique selling point is just that there's a lot of um, demand for like a, a sporty nanny. Like yeah. people want yes. someone that's going to be like enthusiastic and excited. Yeah. So um, that's really how it started because people were just coming up to them in the, the playground being like, we want a nanny like you that runs and is active and then yeah. our kids are going to yeah. kind of, yeah, look up to you a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah. So no, it's, yeah, it works well. And I feel like that's what I more prefer about, like non-US culture is like everyone is so much more enthusiastic about being athletic. I feel like that might do really well in a place like Boulder or like somewhere in Colorado, but I, I think it could do well in any big city. I, honestly, sure, like, yeah. so that when the first, the first time that I like knew of like the athlete man, it was probably, it was probably like when I first met you in London 2017, whenever the beer mile was first, first there. But Maybe it was earlier than that. I can't remember. 2016. Yeah, 2016. 2016. 2016. But like, I remember hearing about it at that time. And like, I I told my wife, I was like, this is like a genius idea because everyone in the I wouldn't call it genius. No, no. (laughs) But like the the angle of it, like exactly like what Adele was just saying is in the US, like every, like the stereotypical like nanny is someone who is basically taking care of you at home and taking care of the kids at home. But like, it's, there's never that angle of like, it's an athletic person who's going to like coach you, like help coach you or whatever, teach you how to dribble a soccer ball or a a football uh, or like take you for a run or anything like that. Like that's, that doesn't exist here. And so I was thinking back to my childhood and like, man, that would have been great. Like everyone who ever, uh, I guess we use we more use the term like babysitter in the U.S., but yeah. everyone who was ever my babysitter was ve- very boring. <laughs> yeah. like, like I didn't get to do anything fun and go outside and run around. I just had to like sit inside yeah. and do whatever. Well, you've, so you've got Netflix now. And now you yeah, now you have even more distractions with uh, video games and everything else. So, no, I like the fir- my first impression was like, yeah, of course, this is going to work. Like, this is actually a really good yeah. idea. Oh, and so that's, cool. that's cool to see it grow over time to like you have a really yeah. good flowing now and hmm. uh yeah so so are you you're like are you just uh i don't know what is like uh how, how many i guess how many nannies and mannies do you have now and are you like you're full-on just like kind of managing this it's almost like yeah, an, so an uber network of like nannies <laughs> yeah. know, more or less so it's 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 yeah it's a full-time job like we pretty much um we work pretty much eight till eight till six Monday to Friday on it. Obviously we get breaks and that sort of stuff. And, and then on, uh, you know, on weekends, we're still doing emails. So it is, it is a, a lot, a long, hard graph, but um, yeah. So I think currently we have, I think it was obviously COVID has had a bit of an effect, but we've got uh, currently going out daily about 300, um, 300 nannies going out daily. So, um, so yeah, it's, you know, there's a lot of families in London that are, being helped and yeah i think the reason why it might not work out here it might work is and i don't know is that um 
the transportation links again going back to that in london are so good and none of none of our students in london have cars because it's impossible to park so to get to and from everywhere it's you know for students it, it's so easy so um so yeah but i don't know whether the students out here have cars and all that sort of stuff um yeah it's probably uh, half and half i don't know yeah, yeah. I, I think I think it still has potential for sure. What maybe once you like you fully mastered the <laughs> London market, the UK market, then you gotta you gotta figure out how to franchise that in the US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, maybe one day we'll take on uh, a few more people to branch out. But right now we're still still conquering London. So, uh, there but we, we have we have thought about it in the past. Maybe there's always Australia. I think it'll work out well in Australia. And uh, we tried to actually go to Birmingham in 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 England. Um, and we had we had that issue that the transportation links just didn't work well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if yeah, yeah, maybe one day we'll we'll get out here. We've had a couple of actually um, American clients as well um, out here, so we send our nannies out here a few times um, to work. So, so yeah, no, it's cool. It keeps us busy and uh, pays the bills. So uh, yeah, that's super cool. That's super cool. Okay, let's let's shift now to we got to talk about. Uh, I think it's just one pet, pet tortoise. We, I like, um, we, awesome. yeah, we, finale story. yeah, we're listening. Here he is. Can you see him? No. There he is. Oh, there he is. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we got to talk about this. Like, this is super unique. Uh, I, big fan, big fan of tortoises. So, what, what's his name? He's called Bean. Be- oh, that's great. That's a great name. So I, I was listening back to, I can't remember which podcast it was specifically that you were on Adele, like, like maybe like a year or so ago, but you talked about how he escaped for a while. In- oh. Like- oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, that's a crazy that, was so, that was so raw as well, because that podcast was literally, I think it was on my birthday because he came back on my birthday. Oh my gosh. Like. It was horrible. It, yeah, it was the worst, like, 72 <laughs> hours. <laughs> like, he, like, it's, it's so sad. He was like a tortoise, but we're so attached. Like, I was, uh... Yeah, so, like, Ben's allergic to, uh, we're both allergic to cats, and Ben's allergic to dogs, so we were like, well, if we're going to get a pet, it's not going to have fur. He's got to have, like, scales. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well. um, yeah, but... Yeah, we got beans, um, how, old, how long have we had him? Like, three years, maybe. Yeah. And it's a rescue tortoise. Isn't yeah, it? we wanted to get well, we wanted to get a rescue tortoise, but we live in a flat and we have like a little courtyard outside, but they're like the rescue tortoise like um form is like intense. It's like how many square meters do you have? Are you gonna be like good tortoise parents? <laughs> like so I think we ended up not getting it through that, but we went on um have you have you ever seen like pre-loved? And they like sell furniture and stuff. <laughs> so sad. Um, and yeah, there was beans amongst all the like <laughs> chairs and tables. We we never knew what he was called before though, did we? <laughs> yeah. We like John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that could be John. Was, was the yeah. just, just pet pet tortoise for sale or yeah, yeah literally. Um and we were actually hoping to get a bit of an older tortoise because it's like a pretty long commitment. Yeah, they live long. Um, he was only like two or three, yeah. um, and they lived like eighty years. So it's it's a big commitment. Eighty years. Yeah, they're gonna. Yeah. He's gonna be alive the same amount of time that you're gonna be alive. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, this, this is why it was so oh traumatic when we God. lost him because we were like we were expecting to have a lifelong pet, and then yeah. all of a sudden he's gone. He just he was gone. Um. So yeah, we were staying at Ben's parents' um house in in lockdown because. Obviously, like I said, we live in a, a small flat, um, so it was just a bit nice to have a garden. Um, and I was actually injured as well, so like your parents had a cross trainer, which was great. So we just we stayed there. We ended up staying for like eleven weeks, and we took beans with us. Um, but I think we just got way too comfortable with him being outside because he was like he doesn't usually have the garden, so we were like just letting him like roam about. And he's he's actually quite small, like he's yeah he's literally like this big and like maybe like a small sort of saucepan um size and yeah we were just outside and he, he literally just walked off 
Um, we, what do we do? We did some, we did some crazy things to try and get him back. Oh my God. Oh, we had an F1 session, didn't we, for like two yeah. hours that Yeah. Night. And like every time you'd look outside, he was like, we convinced you'd see him. Cause I, I, my mum used to have a tortoise and she said, sometimes they just like bury themselves down, fall asleep cause they got cold. And then they just like wake up like in the summer when it gets hot. And we were like, we might lose him for a couple of months, but maybe he'll come back. Um, no so we were literally like putting his heat lamp outside. We were p- playing like tortoise noises like at the yeah. head you thought you went missing <laughs> I had, I, yeah. so we're like googling like how to find a lost tortoise and one of them was like play <laughs> play tortoise mating noises <laughs> So I had like I had like this big speaker set up outside like playing like tortoise like mating it didn't work no <laughs> but we were convinced that that was gonna that was gonna work um and then eventually I think your mum said you should make some posters. <laughs> so we should make these posters. <laughs> and so we can laugh about it now. Um, I was so sad. And like beans and we were like lost tortoise, like pin them on the gates and stuff. And yeah, lo and behold, like it worked. Like we, it was my birthday, I think. We lost him on the Monday. It was my birthday on the Wednesday. Woke up in the morning and um, yeah, it was pretty we were pretty low. We were just like, this is not going to yeah, be, be the day. worst birthday yeah. ever. <laughs> um, we got a call from somebody that had seen our posters. They'd found him in the middle of the road, like a mile away. Yeah. Um, like Ben's parents are like quite rural, so like there's like it's like farmland. Um, and yeah, he was in the middle of the road, and they took him back to their farm. They went to go walk the dogs in the evening and saw our posters. Because they think they were just going to keep him. Um, mm. So yeah, we came out in the yeah the morning, and this lady must have thought we were crazy. We're literally like hysterical about this little tortoise that yeah. she found. Yeah, he is a proper good bloke, though. Yeah, so. he's he is so entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> that's cr- I'm I'm just so impressed that he got that far away. Like yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, but tortoise, people think tortoises are like real slow. When they get moving, they. They fly. Yeah, he like actually charges. Yeah, like, he's fast. <laughs> Don't impress him. He's so he is so fast, honestly. So um, yeah, it's a it's a common misconception. Mm. Well, it's it's a good thing that you were like so caring and trying to because it sounds like the the posters were the reason that it ultimately yeah. worked out that he came home. So it's a good thing that you went all in on that. Yeah, yeah. that was you. That was you actually. That's do. <laughs> We laminated them and everything. <laughs> so, so is he with you right now in Flagstaff, or is he back home? No, no. So I, um, so I'm not sure if you know um, the whole lockdown situation in England, but we got put back into lockdown from January to pretty much mid-April. So, um, so I left London again and went back to my parents' flat, uh, back, back to my parents' house, and uh, I actually built in this. I was just born in lockdown. I built him this like huge house in there. It's like, it's probably like, I don't know, it's probably about 10 foot by five foot. It's massive in, in like, in one of the bedrooms. <laughs> like, <laughs> my parents, my parents are fuming with it. <laughs> like, it's just like, just this big bookshelf with like, just like tons of soil and mud. And <laughs> so, anyway, they're looking after him at the moment. So, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll pick him up when I, uh, when I land back in London on, on Thursday. <laughs> Okay, wow, man, Bean's in good hands then. You, yeah. you, you guys, yeah, taking good care of him. He's getting, <laughs> getting a giant get giant place to explore and everything. Wow. Uh, but in, in the flat, we just literally, uh, he does have his own house, but we just literally every morning just pick him up, put him on the floor, and he just, he'll just, just walk, around, just walk <laughs> around the flat for hours, won't he? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so great. Man, I'm kind of like convinced now to get a... Tortoises are cool. Part of the reason like I've never been super like interested in getting a pet is I, I don't want to have the sadness of the pet pet you know like passing away in 10 years or yeah, whatever. Yeah. and so like yeah, honestly they, they are they are a real good pet like I'd, I'd recommend it i mean yeah i'd, I'd get a, a smaller one because you can get the massive ones can't yeah. you and they actually have to have like a garden and a run and all of that but if you just get a small one you can just have them in your uh in your house <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man i think uh Probably a lot. Well, I don't know. I think I have two more quick things that I want to touch on. So one, Beer Mile podcast. We should probably just talk about the Beer Mile really quickly here. So Ben, you've been a part of the couple of the Beer Mile World Championship yeah. races, Beer Mile World Classics. Will we see you back at a future Beer Mile World Classic? 
Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I mean, I can't run quite as well as I used to. I put on a a bit of bit of muscle, so I'm a bit heavier now. So my running's gone down the drain a bit. I still, I still can uh, run all right. Yeah. Um. You, like, yeah. I mean, he does. He does three sessions with me every week. So. Yeah. I mean, if I mean, if they all clutter bucks up for it, I mean, I I definitely <laughs> definitely back it. But um. I, I mean, I can't keep up with you boys. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you guys are like. What have you guys run? Like, Ben, what have you? I run five oh six, but I keep getting I keep getting DQ. <laughs> <laughs> so I run five oh six. I actually run five oh seven for the Chunder Mile, the uh, the English version. Yeah. But um, my problem with it, and I, I and I'm sure you've had the same problem in the past, is. When you when you down the beer, you I end up leaving like a load of foam at the bottom. I mean, I think you've got to practice that. Yeah. Whereas I, um, yeah, that was my main problem. But I mean, I'd I'd love to do another one, but yeah. I don't know how what, successful. What do you, you guys run? I feel like so I should know this. So Chris is Chris is incredible. At it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I knew I knew you must have been, but like, what More, is what is yeah. your PR? Well, uh, four thirty seven is my best. But, but he's, like, he's like 200 meters ahead of me. Like, <laughs> but, no, I had, I had the exact same problem. Like at, at, at uh, actually in Vancouver, I got DQ'd there because of the same thing. I had the too much. Uh, okay. And so, and actually one of the times in London I did as well, like I've had that happen yeah. two times now. And so same exact issue. I think I finally kind of like practiced enough that I got that part down, but yeah. that's definitely, that's a, that's a common issue. It's like when you start pouring, especially like bud wine, yeah. it just gets oh, so yeah. foamy. It's it's yeah, because yeah, yeah. um, you know, when me and Dale used to make those videos, so we were we were convinced that we were just gonna or not me, but I was convinced <laughs> that Dale was gonna turn up to the beer mile in London, and these lot are all gonna be jet lagged, and we're just gonna he's just gonna smoke it. So he was like, right, Ben, I want you to pace me this first lap. I'm gonna go out hard. I run like a fifty six or so first lap. <laughs> And then they all got to like three laps. And he was like, oh, "I've got nothing left. I'm just gonna drop out." <laughs> <laughs> and I think you, Chris, you probably won by a while that day. I think I was like four or something, but I, I got DQ'd. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I would love to uh, see you guys make a comeback. I mean, where where it is it supposed to be in Manchester this October? That's the word. Okay. Assuming, assuming we like everyone can travel there and whatnot. So yeah, so that I assume that's being back. organized by by Andy Norman. Is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So even even if you don't like whatever, if you don't care how you do, you just got to show up and uh, be part of the action. Because yeah, you and Dan yeah. are a good duo. I love having. Well, you guys. Good, it would be good to catch up with all the uh, all the boys, all the American law and the Canadian law. For sure. Yeah, we had when we went out in Vancouver, we had a we had a brilliant time with you guys. Oh, yeah, God, yeah. yeah. you can be uh, you can be a verified athlete on the new site. We'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the motivation for comeback. Yeah, oh, I'm doing it. Go. Let's go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that orange check mark. No, it's got it. That's my problem. It's foaming again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Maybe you got to try a different beer. I use Blue Moon now, and Blue Moon seems to be the the beer. Bug? It's a, it's definitely less mm-hmm. foamy, so I'd I'd say yeah. give it a try. Maybe maybe it'll change the game for you. I don't know. The uh, the problem is with Britain um, and the beer is that our none of our um, bottles are big enough, are they? And they don't screw top. Yeah. And they and they're not over five percent, so you actually it have to. So he's a screw top. Yeah, you just like. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, you actually have to import them over from or get. Uh, what we used to do is get the Americans to bring them, bring them over to us. Yep. Yeah. We're, 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 we're actually convinced that I mean, <laughs> it's ridiculous. That Dale was convinced that you know that that year that where you beat him, that you Americans had shaken his beer before him. <laughs> and you, that you brought it over and it was like, yeah, like they, you know what? Like, I was in great shape. Like I've been drinking loads. Like and. The, yeah, it was just so foamy. I don't know what happened. And he was convinced. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious. I mean, to be honest, if, if we, if so, like, who, I don't even know who brought his beer for him, but someone brought yeah. the beer. It probably did get shaken up on the, on the airplane. In the yeah, airplane. 100%. Yeah. But, but mine also oh. got shaken up on the airplanes. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, I saw you tried to uh, take down Dale's Chandamar record. Not long ago. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna try again in a couple weeks. Uh, yeah, I did try and I, I didn't quite get it. I ran 501. Uh, okay, but, 
Yeah, it's I mean, it's it's such a different it's such a different game because it's like it's not the carbonation like in the beer mile, but it's so yeah. much volume like your stomach hurts so badly that last lap. Yeah. So yeah. I just was like, it's um, pie glasses. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 and you're allowed to yeah. you're allowed to be decent. And, yeah. and I was trying to I was trying to do it without I was trying not to not to uh, chunder because I thought it'd be faster if I did that. And so like the last lap, I was basically just kind of like jogging because i couldn't yeah. run. I, was, I was so full i couldn't yeah. really my legs so, so it's about, i think it's about, uh, about 150 mil more isn't it per per drink yes yeah 350 yeah. Yeah. So that's why yeah. you're allowed to gender yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and so then i definitely so did a, after <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um but yeah i mean I, I don't know whether i'll ever ever try one again but um yeah, I mean, I'd like. I absolutely love that that Vancouver trip. It was one of the best best trips we've done. Um, so yeah. Well, yeah, we'll have we'll have to see you guys back out there. The the beer mile session videos were they were those were all time when they came oh, yeah. out ahead of that London. And honestly, I was so scared. I was like, Dale's <laughs> gonna destroy me. Like I didn't even expect <laughs> to be close. And so when you guys when you guys went out super fast, and I was already like, I don't know, I was probably fifty meters behind on the first lap because you guys went out so quick. I I would kind yeah. of. I gave up hope at that point. I was like, no yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, because we're so like, like it's not really a thing over, over in England. These yeah. beer miles. We didn't really know. So I was, he was just like, yeah, take me out hard. And I was like, all right, I'll just sacrifice my, my life for you. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah. Good. So yeah. Adele sounds like no beer mile in the future for you. Or would oh, you I'd definitely try it. Yeah, I guess would you? I'd give it a go. Yeah, why not? Okay. I'm not a great beer drinker, but I feel like I would have. Yeah, I'd have to lean into the running. Um, I, don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't even know. So, what's the women's um, world record? I think it's six sixteen, if I remember right. It's low sixes, six sixteen. It is. Well, yeah. so you're definitely fast enough. If you can drink within like, you know, whatever, a minute and a half or so, you could definitely, minute 45, you could get the world record. Okay. You can. I, I feel like I could do it with a different beverage <laughs> if it wasn't beer. I think that would be my downfall. Uh, that, I, I've seen you drink. <laughs> like it's, it's very slow going. <laughs> yeah, all right. oh, you probably beat me at the moment to be fair. I can't run. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, no, I definitely try it. Yeah, I'd be able to try it. It's gonna happen. I appreciate that. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta give it a go. You never know. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe a hidden talent. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I think the tundra mile might be slightly more appropriate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like in a beer mile, if you throw up, do you have to run an extra lap? Don't you? Yeah. Extra lap. That's so you end up doing two Oh, okay. Yeah, so that you can't be sick. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there, there's always people down the back straight who are like, like when no one can see, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I think I've done like a, a cheeky one, like down my vest a couple of times, like down. <laughs> like, Charming. But yeah, no, one, no, one, no one's around. There. <laughs> it would be fun if the same group that does the beer mile did a chunder mile too, because it would oh, it would yeah. be a different, you know, different game. It would be a lot. I think it would. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, we. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. We can't do the bottles. I don't know. <laughs> I think, honestly i think it's only fair if we did like one day we do the beer mile and the next day we the chunder mile it's because then it's it. fair it's like the u.s we have our advantage on the beer mile you have your yeah. advantage on the chunder mile and then it's you know mm. I, I think that'd be a lot a lot more fun well yeah. Fun, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah awesome man good good stuff hopefully yeah <laughs> hopefully we'll see that especially with it being in october hopefully both of you are able to to make it out yeah. I mean, hopefully yeah. I'm able to make it out as well. Yeah. Hopefully I'm able, <laughs> allowed to fly to fly to England at that point. But <laughs> yeah, but I will, we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, I mean, you'd probably have to come and watch rather than compete. Well, I don't know. It's off season. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so to close out, then Adele, what's next for you? What's the next uh, race that you plan? I guess this this podcast might not come out for like a week or two, so we might miss a, a couple. Race, well, maybe we'll miss a race in there, but yeah, what's coming up for you? Um, so at the moment, I'm just um, in Paris for the next few weeks, and then I'm gonna race at Mount Sac on the ninth. Is it? Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited for that. Um, and then I think I'm going to do the sound running one as well in LA. So yeah, looking forward to that. It's really fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. 
Well, be- best of luck with that. Congrats on the W at uh, the USATF Grand Prix Oregon Oregon meet that just happened. That was the fun to watch. Fun to watch. <laughs> Thanks so much. Cool. Anything that you guys want to shout out or plug or, I don't know. Manny's in the description. Yeah, we got the athlete Manny's in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah a few oh. new followers in there would be, wouldn't go amiss. We got, <laughs> we got a, a Dell's blog and website in there as well. Anything else you want to oh, you want to shout out here or, or any other banter that you want to throw at us at the end <laughs> to close this out? <laughs> what can we do? Oh, I've been uh, – <laughs> I've actually been following your little bit of beef on the old uh, your little race coming up. <laughs> so he he won't race me. I, like he he we have the beef. He says that he for sure can beat me, and I've told him I'll race him anytime, any place. Just let me know like a week in advance, and he he hasn't responded to to setting a date. So <laughs> it's like the. Uh, the Logan Paul, um, <laughs> Ben Askren of uh, running, isn't it? <laughs> it is a little bit. He's, he's saying he doesn't want to do it before the Olympic trials in June, which I guess I guess I can get. But I was also like, hey man, you can you can drink four beers. It's not going to hurt your yeah. Olympic trials performance. Right. Like, let's just meet up and do this. So, it, so, it's so he, at some point, I mean, I don't really know. I'm, I'm so out of the loop in American athletics. So he's he's. Um, so has he done beer miles before? Is he? Is he? So he's a he's like a, a pro runner sort of stuff. He's brand. He's never publicly done one. So like he does. I don't know if he has done one. He hasn't said what his PR is or yeah. you know PB is. Uh, yeah. But he's run three. Shoot, I don't even know. I don't even think he's broke three forty for the fifteen yet. So he's actually not even in the Olympic trials yet. He's trying to get a qualifier to get in. Okay. Um. So I mean, obviously he's faster than me, but. He, I think he's underestimating uh, unless he has secretly done a beer mile yeah. that he's good. I think he's underestimating how hard it is. And I think it, no, it's, it's different be because I, I remember when I, when I went for my, when I started my first couple of beer miles, me and Dale were like, we're looking and we're like, oh, we've, we're actually majority better the, at runners than the majority of the guys who do the beer mile. But then you all, apart from that, I mean, you all absolutely destroyed me. I was like, ah, oh, this, yeah, easy. Yeah, I like just 50, slam a couple 50, of beers. Like, yeah, it's it's yeah. different. It's it's, yeah. it's it's different caliber yeah. sort of stuff. One yeah. of his um one of his Instagram comments was something. I think he said something about crushing four natty lights or, or he, some like. He said he can drink. He said he can drink like a cake, like a, a twelve pack of natty light like super fast. And like, and, and that was his like his logic for why he'd be good at the beer mile. He's like, oh, I can. I can drink like whatever. I can drink twenty beers in a night, and I can also run a sub four mile. So but it, it should be really. But fast, it's like three point eight, maybe four point zero percent. And it's also <laughs> it's just different, completely different. different yeah. Thing. I, I I'm not like saying for sure that he'd be bad at it. He's faster than me, so if he can drink, he could be another Corey Belmore. Who knows? But yeah, he, yeah. until he proves it, I'm gonna race him, and I'm gonna see yeah, if I can. Hey, <laughs> I, your heart beats. So uh, I don't know. I wouldn't wouldn't count you out of that one at all. So <laughs> you've got you've got Corey on this week as well, haven't you? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk to him. He's actually gonna be at the uh, the Trials of Miles Kansas City qualifier meet uh, here on this weekend, and so we're mm-hmm. we're actually gonna go to the meet and watch and uh, meet yeah. up with him and, and chat. So yeah, yeah. I like Corey. He's, he's a nice guy. Him. Oh Very yeah, nice yeah. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen him. Actually, yeah, I haven't seen him since Vancouver either. So it's going to be a good time to catch up. Yeah. Any banter? <laughs> mm. <laughs> I mean, banter for me. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun this is a blast to, to chat with you both and uh yeah, yeah thanks so much for coming on and taking some time out it's awesome that you're both in the same place as well and can can join together so yeah this yeah, is thanks for it. having us on it's already fun yeah really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah great to catch up guys of course yeah. hopefully yeah. see you at some point in the near future yeah yeah and good luck with all the uh bmr media stuff it's uh i'm I've, i watch them all so i'm a big fan Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We'll keep Appreciate it going. It. We'll keep grinding away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Yeah, cheers. Wait, are we doing the fast- and we're back with the fastest outro we've ever done. Fastest outro ever. Starting now. Okay. So Adele, Ben, thank you both for coming on. Hope that your training continues to go well in Flagstaff, the meets that you're traveling around to in the US. And then of course, Adele, see you in the Olympic games. Let's talk about the beer of the week. We have Modelo in a can. These look like they've taken a beating. So Modelo is actually 
one of the fastest growing beer brands in really? the US. Did you know that? Hmm. According to the most recent earnings, uh, the quarterly earnings report output by Constellation Brands. So long, long Modelo. Yeah. Long Constellation Brands. Definitely buying those call options. This is not financial advice. But let's take a taste of this fast growing beer, Modelo. I'm gonna say X Factor right away is Oh, X Factor. Oh. X Factor. I'm, I mean strong, strong tab, but I actually prefer the Modelo just the way it looks out of uh, the bottle. Yeah. It looks like a I don't know, um Rolo. I'm a big bottle guy for big sure. So Modelo, I, I, apologies, Adele and Ben, that we didn't have a UK-based beer. A, oh, that's kind of, I mean, that's hard to do. That Well, that's what I was just going to say, is when that's you go to the ask. bar there, I, I can't remember what the, I mean, basically you typically have your, your lager, maybe a, maybe a stout, I don't know. There's usually like two or three beers on draft and you're just like, give me a beer, you know? It's yeah. not, it's not yeah. uh, that specific. So Modelo. What percent is this? Like, is this five? No, I don't think so, right? Like 4.2. 4.4. 4. So okay. it's, man, it's barely even better than my my Bush Lattes or my ABV Whites, my Silver Bullets, my Corn Cobs, my Crispy Boys. I feel like this is the light beer that you drink during the summer, though. Like, between this and Corona. See, I, it doesn't even, like, taste that light for how light it is. I mean, obviously, it's, like, pretty watery, but I, I just mean there's a lot... It's like a pretty strong flavor compared to, I don't know, like a Bush Light, Bud Light. That's fair. I mean, compared to, to Pilsner, so like compare it to Miller Light. This tastes like a darker Miller Light. Yeah, that's a good point. Without like the corn cob, you know. It does have a unique taste. There's, It's different. Whereas I don't necessarily know if I could differentiate a Bush or a Bud or a Miller on a blind taste test. I. I would like to think that I could tell this one apart. So I don't, it's I don't think I could. Know. You don't think you could? You think if you think it's similar enough to the other crispy boys? Yeah, and it like throws me off just enough to where like I I wouldn't recognize it. I haven't had a lot of Modelo, so I wouldn't recognize the taste. Fair. Well, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. I would. I would need to have the taste test, like you know, leading into it in order to recognize yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. definitely don't. I th I have like two of these a year, maybe. <laughs> And I would never buy this. Absolutely would never buy this. Only if it's like really. Only if someone has it. You would never buy Modelo. I feel like Modelo is a dad beer. I mean, I know I wouldn't buy it. I don't need to buy it. Hmm. I also just like it's a pain in the ass to like pull the like the aluminum gold aluminum foil. That just makes yeah, me mad. That makes me so angry. You feel angry. like you're unwrapping a little present. No, it makes me angry. Hmm. I'm like, why don't you charge me twenty cents less and leave the aluminum foil off? True. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's All right. do yeah um, let's get into this quick beer review what do we usually start with taste sure taste let's go with taste out of all beers all beers ever give me a taste i'll give it a seven a s what, what no that's pretty whack, good dude. this dude whack i give it a compared to all beers ever i'll give it like a two jesus it's Christ. not good why this i think is it's not i good. think it's pretty good no no Ugh, no, hmm. it's not good. I would, I would rather have a Hams or a. Well, I shouldn't talk down on Hams because Hams is a great beer. I would rather have a Hams or a Bush or a Bud. Ah, it's not good. No, not good. This is like a, a no. nice light beer to start the night. You know? Nope, it's not. It's one of those beers that I will say. Okay, it is. Um, because it's imported, it's typically a little bit more expensive. So I'll give you that, but I it's still think it tastes pretty good. More expensive and doesn't, it tastes worse. So, mm. you know, mm. value play, okay, negative. Well, okay, drinkability though. What do you got? I, God, I just really don't like the taste, but, but oh. drinkability, I'll still give it like a, I'll give it a six. I'd also give it a six. Okay. Like it's not, the purpose of this beer would be to have, well, I don't know. I guess I don't know what the purpose is. According to their marketing, I think they want it's you to Modelo have multiple. Time. It's Modelo time. Yeah, they want you to have several of them, and I don't think that it is good enough standards to have several of them. Like, the taste is annoying to me. It's just annoying. The taste is annoying. I've never heard a beer described as annoying, but I mean, you heard it like, here first. I mean, I'm not like a picky guy. Like, I can handle anything, but it's it, it's just annoying. I just don't really like it. Fair. So, well, yeah, Modelo, been... not ideal. I think it's also you're just influenced by the, you know, the marketing. 
You've seen it on TV, you're like, oh, Modelo, it's fancy, especial, 1925, whatever. <laughs> What's like, a cerveza? It's got like a gold, whatever. I and you, studied abroad And that's in the thing, Spain. you pull back the aluminum foil like it's fancy, and it's like, this is like the shittiest beer. Like, sure. if I put aluminum foil around a bush light, you'd be like, hell yeah, this is craft beer. You heard it, Bud Light. Heard it here first, Bud Should, Light. Uh, if you want to be a craft beer, you don't even have to brew new beer. Just put it in a different container with aluminum yeah. foil around the bottle cap. That's it. Easy does it. <laughs> Well, we've been talking X for Factor. about a, a mile. Yeah. Oh, that, that's true. We that's just good. we just passed a mile. Uh, X Factor. Yeah, are we done Factor? with this bad boy? Oh, we can do it. Uh, X Factor. You really one like... of, if not the worst beer we've ever had on this Jesus show. Jesus Christ, you're brutal today. I don't know what crawled up your your beehole. Maybe it also hurts that I had a, a better tasting beer before it. I had one of the last remaining so, Fifth Ward beers so that we I, had though. left. Yeah, that's true. I yeah, thought you, true. you you really liked the tab. You're messing with it before. Oh, that's true. That's I mean, I kind of like the noise that it's making. Oh, well, I kind of... Oh, there it is. Ooh, we should... Ari, pretty good sample. All right, if you're listening to Ari that. Clow, if you would like to take this as a sample, no royalties. All right, there it is, y'all. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. That's Modelo. That's the Beer Mile Podcast. That's Adele Tracy. That's Ben Coldre. That's a lesson on tortoises. That's a lesson on running in the UK. What else is it? That is <laughs> that is just a great conversation. Just We're, four four bloody awesome people having themselves a conversation. And we're coming up on your three K PR. Oh boy. Well, y'all, if we're hitting the 3K PR in the outro, it's probably about time to wrap this thing up. Thanks again for tuning in. Check out all of our other podcasts because there's a lot oh, of them. You know, we're, oh, we're episodes, getting there. Yeah, 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 all of our other podcast episodes. Oh yeah, that's true. Our, we don't have on the ne- on the network. On the network. Yeah, yeah. Check out our, our check out our sister podcasts on uh, Sidious Mag Network. Yeah, the Run Your Mouth podcast. Yeah, our slightly inferior but still entertaining enough podcast. If you got nothing else to do in your life, and then we've got our YouTube channel, Beer Mile Media. Check out all of our Kansas City qualifier coverage. If you have not yet, you're missing out. Check out our podcast on Apple Podcasts and make sure you hit that five star. Hey, <laughs> there you have it. <laughs>